Hello again, this is Dr. Bones, Dr. Geller, and Instructor Beats back to present Multiplying Fractions playlist video number four. As Dr. Geller so eloquently told us in the intro video, today I will multiply fraction by fraction by cross shading on an area model. In fifth grade, we multiply fractions for three different reasons, as our first three videos told us. The first one is repeated addition. Number two, when we are finding a fraction of a group or a set. And number three, when we are comparing using multiplication. To review our video number two, you multiply when you are finding a fraction of a group or a set. You also today are going to be multiplying when you are finding a fraction of another fraction. So the word of is very important for both of those. But just like video two said, you are not multiplying if you are finding a fraction of one because one is not a group or a set and it is also not a fraction. So we'll be looking for these things as we continue to work on multiplying fractions. Let's jump into our steps for how we can multiply fractions times fractions using area model. Step number one, you are gonna draw one of the fractions using a rectangular area model, splitting it with lines going vertically, and then shade in your fraction. Step number two, you're gonna draw the second fraction using horizontal lines and shade it in. And then step number three, you're going to count the pieces that were shaded in both times. So just go ahead and write these steps down and we will explore a problem together. What do you say? Come along with Dr. Bones today. So here we have the I do. We, I want to know what is two sixths of three fourths. And then what, and I'm going to be using my dinosaur egg as my variable. Let's see what dinosaur is trying to scratch its way out of this egg. <laughs> and so we know that finding a fraction of another fraction really means that we are multiplying, but today we're going to explore that with our tape diagram or area model. So I want to know what is two sixths of three fourths. So I'm gonna start by splitting my uh, area model vertically into four equal pieces because that was my um, denominator. And so up here, I'm gonna have three fourths, which means I want to know one, two, three fourths, and I'm going to shade it in now. If you notice, I'm shaded it in using these diagonal lines, right? So I am cross shading in my three fourths, not just colored it in, and you will see why in just one minuto. So now I am starting with three fourths and I want to know what was two sixths of that, right? So I had a cake, I took out three fourths of the cake and gave it to my son and he only ate two sixths of it, how much did he eat, right? That might be the word problem that goes with this. So now horizontally, I'm going to split it into six. So just as I remember, I'm going to split it into thirds first because fractions should be as equal as possible. And then if I split each of those thirds into half, and again, it won't ever be perfect, but you can do your best. Now I have my six pieces and I only wanted two of those because that was my numerator. So I'm gonna do one, two, six, and I'm going to cross shade these in, but I'm going to do it the opposite way. And if you look, you'll see now that these are going across each other, right? And so that is very important in a second. And so I'm going to cross shade in my two six. Now, if you notice, I did the entire two six, not just part of it, right? I did this entire piece right here and then this entire piece. Now, step number three said, count the pieces that were shaded in both times. That is why I cross shaded because you guys don't have colored pencils or markers with you all the time. Typically you have a pencil or a pen, 
pencil is preferable for math because you should be making lots of mistakes and learning from them. And so now I'm just going to shade in every piece that was shaded in twice. So these were, this one was only shaded at once, so I won't shade it in. This piece was shaded in twice, this piece was shaded in twice, and this piece was also shaded in twice. The rest of these were either only shaded in once or not shaded in at all. Now, when I count the pieces that Dr. Bones shaded in both times, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. That is my numerator. And my denominator is now one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. So out of my egg is six twenty-four. So that is the <laughs> problem. And as always, I see that these are both even numbers, but they're both also divisible by three. So I want to simplify using my identity property of division. And I see again that both of these are even. So I'm going to go one more time dividing it by the big one, two over two. And your answer simplified is one four. <laughs> so if you notice what I did, I again wrote one of the fractions up top. I split my area model or tape diagram vertically. I took the other fraction to the side and I split it horizontally. And then I made sure that I counted the pieces that I shaded in twice. Let's do this one together and find out what dinosaur fraction is behind this egg. So I am trying to find two fifths of two thirds and I'm really finding a fraction of a fraction, which is multiplication. So I want to know what two fifths of two thirds is. So I'm gonna start with two thirds and if you put two thirds on the side, because of our commutative property of multiplication, we should get the same answer if you did it correctly. But I always like to start with the original fraction of two thirds. So now I'm gonna split my area model into three equal pieces. And I know that I was looking for two thirds of those. So I will shade in two thirds again, using my cross shading strategy not just shading it in like I'm coloring a frozen coloring book and trying to color in Elsa's hair blonde. So I want to know, okay, let's say Elsa ate two thirds of her birthday cake and then Anna stole two fifths of what she had. So now I need to know what is two fifths of two thirds. And so I'm gonna split this side going horizontally into five equal pieces because that is my denominator. Again, trying to be as equal as possible, although sometimes it is hard to be perfect, we can always do our best. So now I have five equal pieces. And again, I only want to know two fifths of those. So cross shading the opposite way of how I did it before, I'm going to cross shade two entire fifths, not two pieces, two fifths. So sometimes people just shade in two of these pieces instead of the whole row. Make sure you do the whole row. Now I see that I need to count the pieces that were shaded in twice. And so I see right here that there were four pieces shaded in twice. And my new denominator is 15. And so out of the egg comes a 4 15 fraction dinosaur. We have uncovered a new species, the purple 415. And I can see that I cannot simplify this, so my final answer is 415. When I found out two fifths of two thirds, that gave me the fraction 415. So let's do a word problem together so you can see how we can use this strategy to help us. So let's do this word problem. My state, my question says, what fraction of the whole garden are green tomatoes? So my statement's going to say, blank of the whole garden are green tomatoes. So I know because I wrote my statement and that's guiding my thinking, I'm looking for anything about green tomatoes or the garden. So as I read this, Lexi has a garden that she is planting vegetables in. She must have a New Year's resolution to be healthy. And one fourth 
of, I always underline the word when it's directly after fraction, and then I read the next words to see, okay, what am I doing with this fraction? This says the garden. That just means it's one. So this is not multiplication, but still important. She's one fourth of the garden is going to be tomatoes. Two fifths of, oh, I see the uh, word of directly after a fraction again. So I underline it. And I see that the next word say the tomatoes. And I know that the tomatoes or tomatoes, depending on where you're from, are one fourth. So really this is a fraction. It says two-fifths of one-fourth are green. So this is important. And then it says right here that the rest are red. All of my information is already identified. So now I develop my plan. So I know that I had a garden and I know that one-fourth of the garden was tomatoes. So I'm going to draw my fraction tape diagram or area model. And I know that I had one-fourth of my entire garden was tomatoes. So I will label this part as tomatoes. And then it said two-fifths of those tomatoes are green. So I know that I need to find out what is two-fifths of my one-fourth. Now, I'm going to do this all in one color so you can see why it's important when you cross-shade. So I know I need to split my garden now into five equal pieces or as equal as possible. Again, it is hard to be perfect, but Dr. Bones tries. So now I know that I needed one two fifths. Oh, I forgot my one fourth up there. And these two fifths are going to be green. And it said the rest was red. So I do want to label that just in case they tried to trick me with the question. But all I want to know is green tomatoes because that is what my statement is talking about. So now I'm going to cross shade two fifths of the garden. And when I count the pieces that were shaded in twice, I see that there were only two. So I'm going to say that two out of one, two, three, four, five, and then five, 10, 15, 20 pieces. Two twentieths of the whole garden are green tomatoes. And of course, you could simplify that as one tenth. So really, one tenth of the whole garden are green tomatoes. We hope you have enjoyed Dr. Bones, Dr. Geller, and our Instructor Beats production of multiplying fractions using area models. Please check out our other videos on Instructor Beats Official. And as always, please subscribe. Dr. Bones and Instructor Beats. Out!